Now, we are going to discuss how to solve a numerical example uh, re related to the neuropathy system Mamdani approach. The statement of the problem is as follows. So, here we are going to develop one neuropathy system based on the Mamdani approach and this particular fuzzy reasoning tool is represented using the structure of a multi layered the network. There are two inputs I 1 and I 2 and there is only one output that is O of the, the fuzzy logic controller. The neural network consists of five layers as we discussed and the function of each layer is indicated in the figure. The figure I am going to show you. The input I 1 has been expressed using the linguistic term like near, far, very far. So, there are three linguistic terms near, far and very far. Now, similarly your the, the three other linguistic terms like your small, medium and large have been utilized to represent the second input that is your I 2 and the output has been represented using three other linguistic term like your low, medium low high and very high that is L w h and your the v h. Now, I am just going to show you. So, this particular the network the membership function distribution of the inputs and the outputs are assumed to be triangular in nature and here uh, the base width of near very far and half base width of far triangle are kept equal to V 1 1 then comes your V 1 3 and 1 2 respectively for the first input that is I 1. Similarly, for I 2. So, your this V 2 4, V 2 6, V 2 5 are used to represent the base width of small, large and half base width of your the medium, medium triangles. Now, your this W 1 1, W 3 1 and W 2 1 indicate the base width of triangles representing low and very high outputs and half base width of your the high triangle. Now, here uh, actually the starting values for this I 1, I 2 and this output are assumed to be equal to 1.0, 10.0 and 5.0. I am just going to show you that uh, the figure. Now, we will have to find out the deviation in prediction for the training scenario which is nothing but I 1 equals to 1.6, I 2 equals to 18.0 and the output is nothing but is your 9.0. So, for this particular training scenario, so I will have to find out what should be your the deviation in prediction. Now, let us see how to determine. So, that particular the deviation in prediction. Now, this shows actually uh, the, the neurophagy system. Now, here let me explain so, I have got two inputs here one is I 1, I 2 and as usual on this layer 1 we use the linear transfer function. Now, on layer 2 uh, actually uh, we try to represent the connecting weights between your the first neuron lying on the input layer and the first neuron lying on the your the second layer. So, that is nothing but is your say V 1 1, then comes V 1 2, V 1 3. Now, V 1 1 is going to represent near, V 1 2 is going to represent your half base width for the far and V F R, uh, your V 1 3 is going to represent your the base width for very far right angle triangle. Similarly, your the membership function distribution for the linguistic terms used to represent I 2 uh, are actually denoted by V 2 4, then comes V 2 5, then comes your 
v 2 6. Now, there are three linguistic terms for i 1, three other linguistic terms for i 2. So, here I have got actually uh, the nine rules and this is nothing but the layer 3 that is the and operation layer and the layer 4 is nothing but the fuzzy inference and layer 5 is the defuzzification. Now, the connecting words that is your w 1 1 w 1 1 then comes your w 2 1 and this is nothing but w 3 1 are going to represent either the half base weight or the base weight of your the triangular membership function distribution used to represent the output variable. Now, let us see how to how to find out the deviation in prediction. So, for this particular your the training scenario. Now, as we discussed previously, so here you can find out that v 1 1 is kept equal to v 1 2 and that is kept equal to v 1 3 just to ensure the symmetrical triangular membership function distribution for i 1. Then v 2 4, v 2 5 and v 2 6 are nothing but uh, your are going to represent the symmetrical membership function distribution to represent i 2. Then comes your w 1 1 equals to w 2 1 equals to w 3 1 are used to represent the triangular membership function distribution for this uh, your the output and we consider the symmetrical membership function distribution. Now, here we assume the numerical values for. So, this particular v that is v 1 1 equals to v 1 2 equals to v 1 3 and that is kept equal to 0 0.3 then v 2 4 equals to v 2 5 equals to v 2 6 that is kept equal to 0 0.6 then w 1 1 is equals to w 2 1 is equals to w 3 1 that is kept equals to your 0 0.4 and you can see that. So, all such values are in the normalized scale lying between 0 and 1. Now, here the range for this b 1, b 2 and b 3. Now, this b 1 is going to represent what should be the half base weight or base weight of the triangular membership function distribution used to represent i 1. B 2 is the half base weight or the base weight of the triangular membership function distribution used to represent i 2 and b 3 is nothing but it is going to represent either half base weight or base weight of the triangular membership function distribution used to represent the output. And we are going to use actually the center of sums method for defuzzification. Now, here one thing I should mention that although these values the v, v and w values are in normalized scale. So, we will have to find out the real scale values corresponding to these particular the normalized value and considering the ranges for your the different variables like your b 1, b 2 and b 3. Now, b 1, b 2, b 3 are having different ranges and we will have to use this normalized value to find out what should be the actual real values for this b 1, b 2 and b 3. So, this I am going to discuss in details now. Now, this shows actually the manually constructed membership function distribution for this i 1, i 2 and your the output and as I told that for this particular i 1, there are three linguistic term near, far and very far and we are considering the triangular membership function distribution. Now, this is actually one right angle triangle, here also we consider one right angle triangle and this is nothing but the isosceles triangle. And this b 1 is going to represent the base width of this triangular right angle triangle or the half base width of this isosceles triangle. Similarly, to represent i 2 we use three other linguistic term that is your small, medium and large and 
the B 2 is used to represent the half base width of this isosceles triangle or the base width of this particular the right angle triangle. Now, similarly to represent the output O, we use three linguistic term that is your low, medium and very high sorry low, high and very high and B 3 represents either the half base width of this isosceles triangle or the base width of this particular the right angle triangle. And for simplicity, we are considering the symmetrical uh, membership function distribution. Now, as I told that corresponding to this normalized value of your uh, uh, the connecting weight. So, you will have to find out the real values. How to find out the real values? Now, to find out the real values, so we use this particular the equation that is x real value is nothing but n, n is nothing but the normalized value multiplied by x max minus x min plus x min. Now, for a particular variable say b 1, if I know the normalized value that is nothing but 0 0.3, if I know the maximum value for b 1 that is 1.5 and the minimum value for this particular your b 1 that is 0 0.5. So, very easily I can find out what is the real value for this particular the b 1. So, the real value for this b 1 is found to be equal to 0 0.8. Similarly, we can find out the real value for this particular b 2 and b 2 is nothing but the normalized value was 0 0.6 multiplied by. So, b 2 maximum is 15.0, b 2 minimum is 5.0 plus b 2 minimum is 5.0. So, this is nothing but 11.0. Similarly, for this b 3 we can find out the real value. So, n is the normalized value is 0 0.4, b 3 maximum is 8.0 b 3 minimum is 2.0 and b 3 minimum is 2.0 and if you substitute we will be getting that is 4.4. So, the real value for b 1 0 0.8, b 2 is 11.0 and b 3 is nothing but 4.4. Now, using these real values actually we can modify the membership function distribution now. So, the modified membership function distribution will look like this. So, the starting value for I 1 that has been kept constant to 1.0, but this particular B 1 uh, has been changed. Now, similarly I will be getting this modified membership function distribution for I 1. Similarly, we get the modified membership function distribution for I 2 and we also get the modified membership function distribution for your the output. And once you have got the modified membership function distribution, now if I just pass E particular value of I 1 input another value of this particular say I 2. Now, corresponding to this particular I 1, so I will be getting actually uh, the, the, the two mu values, one is corresponding to the near another is corresponding to your far. Similarly, corresponding to this particular value of I 2, so I will be getting, so E particular mu value corresponding to small, another mu value corresponding to this particular the medium. So, here there are two mu values, here there are two mu values, so 2 multiplied by 2, so there is a maximum 4 fired rules. And using that particular fired rules. So, we will have to find out what should be the fuzzy fired output and then we will have to go for your uh, the crisp output using defuzzification. Now, this table shows actually those 9 rules, the rules are as follows. So, if I 1 is near and I 2 is small, then the output is low and so on. So, here we have got 9 rules. And as we discuss that out of these 9 rules only 4 are going to be fired. 
Now, whatever I discussed little bit, so we have written it here. So, let us try to see. So, you can see that on layer 1, we consider the linear transfer function. So, the inputs were actually I 1 was 1.6, I 2 was 18.0. So, 1 I 1 is nothing but I 1 is 1.6, then 1 I 2 is nothing but I 2 is 18.0. And as we consider linear transfer function on the first layer, so output is equals to input. So, 1 O 1 is nothing but 1 I 1 is 1.6, then comes your 1 O 2 is equals to 1 I 2 is nothing but 18.0. Now, here uh, once you got this particular the output, uh, now actually what we do is we try to find out what should be the mu value. Now, I 1 is nothing but uh, I 1 is nothing but 1.6 and I 2 was 18.0. So, corresponding to this 1.6, now if I just draw it here 1.6, now if I draw 1.6 here, then we can see that it could be uh, near or it could be far. So, there are two possibilities. So, corresponding to this particular I 1, so, I 1 can be called either near or far. Now, it can be called near with some membership function value that is 0 0.25 and it can also be called far with another membership function value 0 0.75. Now, for this triangular membership function distribution, how to find out this mu value using the principle of similar triangle. So, that thing we have discussed in much more details. So, I am not going for that once again. So, corresponding to I 1, the two mu values we can find out. Similarly, corresponding to your I 2, so this I 2 can be called either small or medium and we can find out mu small is 0 0.272727 and mu medium is nothing but is your 0 0.727272. So, we can find out your the mu values that is the membership function values that means your the fuzzification is over. Now, once you have done this particular fuzzification, now we go to layer 3. Now, as I told that on layer 3, we have got 3 multiplied by 3, 9 combination or the 9 possible rules and out of 9 in fact, only 4 rules are going to be fired. The four fired rules are as follows. If I 1 is near and I 2 is small, then the output is something that I have not written it here. The second fired rule, if I 1 is near and I 2 is medium, then the output is something. The third fired rule, if I 1 is far and I 2 is small, then the output is something. Then if I 1 is far, and I 2 is medium, then the output is something. So, there are 4 fired rules. So, out of 9, 4 rules are going to be fired. Now, corresponding to these fired rules, uh, actually we will have to find out what should be the, the output. Now, if you see the inputs of the third layer, so that is nothing but your the two mu values corresponding to the first fired rule. So, 3 I 1 is nothing but, so the two mu values that is 0 0.25 and 0 0.272727, then 3 I 2 is 0 0.25 and 0 0.727272, then 3 I 4 is 0 0.75 and 0 0.272727 and 3 I 5 is 0 0.75 and 0 0.727272. Now, we compare. So, we try to find out what should be the output of the end operation layer. So, 3 O 1 that is the output that is nothing but the minimum between these two and this will be the minimum. Then 3 O 2 is the minimum between these two and this will be the output and 3 O 4 is the minimum between these two. So, this is the output 
and 305 is the minimum between these two and this is actually your the output. So, we try to find out the minimum of the two mu values and once you have got this now we are in a position to know the output of your uh, the, the, the third layer. Now, we go for your the fuzzy inference and that is nothing but layer 4. Now, in the layer 4 corresponding to each of these particular input combination the third input combination. So, we know this particular output for example, say the first fired rule is if i 1 is near and i 2 is small then the output is low. Similarly, the second fired rule if i 1 is near and i 2 is medium then the output is low. Similarly, you can also uh, uh, read the third rule and the, the fourth fired rule. Now, actually what you will have to do is, so you will have to find out the firing strength of each of these particular rule and that firing strength we have already determined in as output of the layer 3. And once you know this particular fire strength, firing strength, now we are in a position to find out like what should be the fuzzy fired output for each of the, the fired rules. For example, say if we concentrate on the first fired rule that is your n r s m l low that is if i 1 is n r and i 2 is s m then the output is low. So, I will be getting the fuzzy fired output is nothing but so this particular the shaded portion and its corresponding area and center of area we can find out and how to determine those things we have discussed in much more details. The second fired rule if i 1 is near and i 2 is m then the output is low and this particular area is nothing but is your the your the fuzzy fired output. I can find out the area we can find out the center of area. Then the third fired rule if i 1 is far and i 2 is small then the output is high. So, I will be getting like this as the fuzzy fired output the shaded portion I can find out its area and center of area. Similarly, corresponding to the first fired rule the fourth fired rule if i 1 is far and i 2 is medium the output is your high. So, we can find out like what should be your so this particular the fuzzy fired output and once you have got this particular fuzzy fired output now actually <coughs> we carry out the OR operation. So, just to superimpose all such fuzzy fied output and if you superimpose all such fuzzy fied output. So, you will be getting actually so this type of combined fuzzy fied output. So, this is nothing but the combined fuzzy fied output and once you have got this particular combined fuzzy fied output we can use the center of sums method for defuzzification and we can find out. So, this particular your the crisp output. Now, this is the way actually we determine actually the crisp output for a set of input parameters. That means, on layer 5 we carry out. So, this type of your defuzzification using the center of sums method and this 5 O 1 is nothing but the output of the first neuron lying on the fifth layer and that is nothing but A 1 F 1 plus A 2 F 2 plus A 3 F 3 plus A 4 F 4 divided by A 1 plus A 2 plus A 3 plus A 4. So, you will be getting <coughs> this as the, the crisp output. Now, if this is the crisp output, so this particular crisp output can be used uh, just to find out the deviation by comparing with your <coughs> the target value that is 9.0. So, we compare, so this calculated value with the target value and we try to find out, so this particular the deviation. Now, this deviation could be either the positive value or negative value, but here fortunately we are getting the positive value, but it could be negative also and that is why 
it is better to find out actually the mod value of the difference between your T O 1 and that is nothing but 5 O 1. So, we can find out so the mod value of this particular the deviation. Now, based on this particular mod value, so what we do is, so this error we will have to propagate it back for your uh, the further modification of the network. So, we can use the back propagation algorithm for its training or the tuning, but uh, your uh, the transfer function ought to be defined in a in a very nice way, so that we can carry out the differentiation at least in the logical sense and we can implement this particular BP algorithm. So, just to modify the connecting weights or other design variables of this particular the network. Now, we can also use uh, actually a genetic algorithm or any other uh, nature inspired optimization algorithm. Now, if I use the genetic algorithm, so all the design variables we can keep it uh, inside that particular the G A string. The G A will try to uh, find out or try to evolve one optimal the neurophagy system and if you use genetic algorithm just to evolve that optimal neurophagy system. So, that will be known as actually your genetic uh, neurophagy system. So, genetic neurophagy system uh, uh, is this. So, that means, we are using the genetic algorithm just to evolve the neurophagy system that is nothing but the genetic neurophagy system. So, this is the way actually we can combine this uh, your physiologic and neural network particularly this Mamdani approach and uh, we can uh, design and develop the optimal reasoning tool based on the Mamdani approach and this particular the fuzzy reasoning tool has been implemented using the structure of a network and this structure we can utilize for further tuning, training and ultimately we are going to train that Mamdani approach of fuzzy reasoning tool. Now, this is the way actually we can develop uh, your the neurophagy system. Thank you.